I made a thing. It lights up mostly sometimes. Since leaving the lab, I've really missed the physicality of doing science. I've missed working with my hands. And so I decided to take on a project that would combine genetics, embroidery, circuitry, and coding. I decided to embroider a DNA helix and use little LEDs as the base pairs. Step one to doing this was to design my pattern because there was absolutely no way that I was going to do this freehand. DNA is a double-stranded molecule. Each strand is comprised of a sugar phosphate backbone and then the four molecular bases, a, T, C, and G that comprise the genetic code. The two strands come together to form this beautiful helical structure, and while I wasn't going to be embroidering every individual molecule of the backbone, there were still some important properties that I thought it was important to stay true to. The first is the handedness of DNA. A DNA helix can be either left or right handed. It's gonna look backwards to you, but this is my left and this is my right. The most common DNA structure that we talk about and think about existing sort of in solution in our bodies is B DNA, and this is right-handed. What I think about in my head, what works for me, is to look at a helix and imagine it in 3D and imagine running my hand around the outside of it, up the strand. And so the fingers of my right hand curve up and around that helix, so it's a right-handed helix. This is a left-handed helix. This is a right-handed helix. Typically, when we're talking about DNA, we're talking about right-handed helices. The other thing I really wanted to get right was the spacing of the base pairs. There are just about 10 base pairs per turn of DNA, and the width of the helix is about two nanometers wide, and each turn is about 3.4 nanometers long, so I tried to get those ratios correct as well. Once I had this basic structure drawn, I started to think about how I was gonna actually add the circuits to this helix. And for this video, all of my circuitry supplies are from Adafruit, and I'm gonna put a list of everything I used in the description below. This video is not sponsored by Adafruit. They just had all of the supplies that I needed and some great tutorials to help me get started, so they get a thumbs up from me. When we think about electric circuits, the most basic circuits consist of a power source, the conducting path, and the load. Here, our power source is a battery pack, the path is some conductive thread, and the load are the LEDs, as well as a Gemma M0 electronics board, which will later let me program what the LEDs do. So I'd really hoped that I could stitch all of these LEDs in series, just because it would make the actual stitching a lot easier. But when I prototyped this, I found that when I placed even just two LED sequins in series, it significantly reduced their brightness. So instead of my series circuit, I came up with a parallel circuit design. Next, I had to decide which base pairs to place into my helix, and this is the first coding section of this video. DNA is made up of four base pairs, A, T, C, and G. A's bind to T's, and C's bind to G's. The order of those bases in your genes codes for the order of amino acids in a resulting protein. Your DNA is transcribed into RNA, and then that RNA is translated into protein. That is the central dogma of molecular biology. The way that it works is that the protein-producing machinery in your cells looks at the RNA three bases at a time. Those three bases, called codons, tell it which amino acid to add to a protein. The process starts at a start codon, most often ATG in DNA or AUG once it's been transcribed into RNA because they are used replace Ts, and then each three base pair codon after that encodes the information for the amino acids needed for the protein. So GCA would be an amino acid called alanine, GGU would be a glycine, etc., etc. So I decided to start with a start codon and then go from there. Now, because it's a very short sequence, there isn't a real protein encoded in here, but I decided to have a little fun with it. Each three base pair codon denotes an amino acid, and each amino acid can be denoted by a single letter code, Using that single letter amino acid code, I tried to spell out stars, but it's a little hard to tell because some of the bases are hidden behind the turns of the helix, but it, it got close. Now that I had done all of this planning, it was time to finally get started stitching. And I started by stitching sort of the back of the helix, what would be in the back in 3D in gray, so that I could lay some of the base pairs over it. And then I'd hoped that at the end, I could stitch the front parts of the helix in 3D over the top of some of the LEDs. And it kind of worked, but I, I don't regret it. 
I decided to leave the Gemma board on the front. Originally, I wanted to hide it on the back, but then I kind of thought that the circuitry is one of the cool things about this project. So I thought leaving it exposed on the front might be kind of neat. So that's what I did. I first decided to stitch the LEDs on with three main wires. The positive wires from the D0 and D2 pads on the Gemma would come down the outside of the helix and the ground would run up the middle. This seemed like the easiest circuit path and with a little poking and prodding and tightening of stitches, it worked. And it was 100% functional, but at this point I realized looking at it that each side of the project was lighting up at the same time. And wouldn't it be so much cooler if instead each strand of the DNA helix was lighting up at the same time? And I decided that yes, that would be a lot cooler. So I undid all of the stitching of the circuits that I had done and started over. This time I used a little tacky glue to place all of my LEDs first to keep them in line while stitching, and this was way easier. The problem though is that when you take this 3D helix and you squish it down to 2D, the paths of those different strands are now overlapping. And I was really worried about all of these overlapping wires that were probably gonna cause short circuits. So I had to figure out some way to try and insulate the paths from one another. I decided to try electrical tape. I started by stitching the ground wire through all of the LEDs, then covered that in tape. Then I stitched one strand of the helix, covered that up, and then stitched the other. And again, with a little futzing around, it, it mostly worked. I realized at this point that I seemed to get a better connection when stitching this way over the LEDs rather than this way. I think because the thread is touching more of the conductive surface of the sequin. So I actually redid a lot of my ground stitching this way at this point, but cool, it works. Now, one of the cool things about this Gemma pad is that you can load code onto it that will control what's happening in all of these created circuits. It understands a language called CircuitPython, which is similar to the language Python, which I've done a little bit of coding in before. Now, I didn't need this to do anything super fancy, and I'm very new to the language CircuitPython, so really all I did was mess around with some of the pre-written code that was already there up on Adafruit in some of their tutorials. I though think that this is actually sometimes a really great way to learn a new language is to have a piece of code that works and then mess around with the parameters and see what happens. And that way you can figure out what's going on in that code. So here it was really easy for me to change parameters and I got a really visual output of what that code was doing. And for me, that was like a really nice feedback loop of, okay, here's what I'm doing in the code. Here's its output. Here's how these things are working together. I started with Adafruit's Blinky code and changed it very slightly so that the two strands of DNA blinked separately from one another at different intervals. Cool. Originally, I had wanted to use stitches to represent the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. So AT pairs have two hydrogen bonds between them and GC pairs have three. But with all of the electrical tape and potential fire hazard I'd already created on the back of this thing, I really didn't want to add any more stitches into the middle of it. So instead, I decided to use a little bit of fabric paint to paint on the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. Once it was done, I felt like it needed just a little something extra, so I added some colorful French knots around the outside because I just like embroidering French knots. And it was done. And here it is. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. I think. I was probably stretching my circuit embroidery skills by immediately trying to do something that had 28 different LEDs on it, but I'm still pretty proud of how it came out. My insulating technique was not perfect, and so you can see that there are some that don't always light up every time, like this guy. This guy has a little bit of a problem. So definitely some lessons learned, definitely some things I would do differently if I was going to do that again. But for a wild first attempt at something, I'm pretty happy with it. But that's one of the things I really liked about this project. I'm not a master embroiderer. I'm not super great at coding. I remembered almost nothing about circuitry. I do hope my PhD gives me a little bit of like expertise in the DNA area, but for three out of these four things, I was not an expert, but I decided to try them anyways. And I think a lot of us are scared of trying new things or learning new things because we're not gonna be an instant expert in them, but I think that's okay. I think we should be trying those things. So whatever it is that you wanna try, but you've been worried about trying it because you're not gonna be an expert, do it. Now this video is 100% not a how-to. Uh, this I feel like could possibly be a fire hazard happening back here, but 
If you are someone who has more experience in any of these things than I do, I do welcome the comments on how I could have done this better, how I could have saved myself some hassle uh, and a little bit of tearing my hair out to get this to work right every time, because I do wanna try and do similar things in the future. So if you have suggestions, I'm gonna welcome them in the comments down below. So thank you as always to my Patreon patrons. Your support and encouragement gives me the confidence to be able to try new things and put it out into the world like this, which I so appreciate. So thank you so much for that. Thank you to you for watching. If there's something that you wanna see me try, kind of similar to this, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really interested in trying to get my hands doing more hands-on things again. And a big shout out to AJ of LibLab. I'll put one of his videos up here for answering some of my LED questions. And as always, remember to go forth and do science. I might keep that back there. That looks kind of cool. Needs a little bit of set dressing, but I like it back there.